everybody. How are you doing today? Doing well, thank you. Good, Great. good. Hi, uh, hi. Um, I am so happy to be here today and to be able to talk to artist Darren Smith and to Veronica Zalis, who's the executive director at the Athenaeum. And we are fortunate enough to be working with Darren uh, with the current exhi exhibit there at the Athenaeum, which was that little clip you just saw. So um, I'm going to um, start off just by asking Darren to talk a little bit about his work. And we also have some of his slides that we can show you. Thanks, Jane. Uh, yeah, my, my artistic process was a desire for me to find a way to marry photography with the surreal way that I see the world. So I've always been intrigued by things that create different visions of the world around me, like kaleidoscopes or broken mirrors, uh, reflections on water. And so I developed this collage technique where I take a lot of photos of a scene that intrigues me and I come up with a new composition with the prints and then I cut them up into small pieces and glue them back uh, onto illustration board. And that technique allows me to kind of create these, these surreal visions that start with, with the reality of, of the scene that I photographed, but then I can, you know, push it in different directions right well it's i know it's hard to um uh, see these the details on the images that i have to show you um but should we swing into that and uh, let our viewers take a look at, at some of the images that you've created okay let's see i am going to add this to our stream so this piece was uh, shot in San Miguel de Allende, which is a beautiful town. It's right in the heart of Mexico. And I was there for work. I um, supervised the foreign language editions of National Geographic magazine. And we partner with publishing houses around the world and we make versions of the magazine in, in other languages. And I was attending a photography festival here and I was struck by just the beauty of the town. All of the buildings are in these lovely ochre shades of yellow, orange, and red. And it was shortly after Day of the Dead, um, a celebration of, of ancestors who have passed, but not in a mournful way. It's, it's really um, a celebration of the past. And I kind of envision this woman in the center, like she's on the threshold of this portal, kind of looking forward to her future, you know, what, what might come next. Um, so for me, this is a combination of, of the past and, and the future uh, in, in one piece. Right, and one thing that um, our viewers can't see, uh, from this image right here is all the little details that we had we had talked about with the various fragments of the photos and that's something that's another reason to come to the Athenaeum <laughs> so and see Darren's show or and also show up for the dance uh, the dance show mm -hmm. uh, that that we'll be doing on February twentieth and Veronica I know you you had something that um, you you have been so wonderful in supporting all this work with combining dance with visual art. And um, I'd just like to ask you about, about that. Sure, well, um, thank you, Jane. We have been doing this for a number of shows now, and I think it's uh, incredibly successful. Um, our collaborations really work to increase the visibility of artists, providing inspiration for movement for the Jane Franklin dancers, um, as well as providing a channel for the visual artists to talk about their work artistic process and influences. And uh, part of my favorite, or one of my favorite things um, to, to really talk about at, uh, during the question and answer period after your shows is um, asking each of the dancers what they took away from a particular art piece and how it influenced their, um, their movement. Whether it be a leap or a swoop or just something in the, in the uh, 
painting or for photograph that really inspired them to, to add movement to that. So that's a really exciting for me to hear, but not only me, uh, our visitors and uh, attendees to the performance as well. Right, and um, so we, we always go about this process uh, very differently uh, about the way we work together. But one thing that all of the past pieces that we've done at the Athenaeum have had in common is some interviews with the artists. So one thing you'll hear behind all of our pieces is Darren's voice talking a little bit about his process. And we're able to match some movements with the words he's speaking, as well as his overall ideas about symmetry and fragmentation. So um, that has really been a fun aspect of this collaboration. And also, so, you'll be doing the same with uh, Noni Hammersley as well, right? So, right, um, right. It'd be great to get sort of into the um, heads and movement of all of the artists. Yes, yes. And Darren, I was just wondering if there was any more of these uh, of the the images that I have with me. I happen to have with me to today. If you w wanted to speak um, about any any one. Yeah, absolutely. I think I, I could speak to any of them. Um, okay, let me see. Let me see how, let's see what I have. To, uh, oh, I think I can do it. Let's see. There we go. Okay. Um, I'll go to this next one, especially because there's one part of your, te uh, from your interview, you had talked about face and eyes. So we actually use some gestural movement that's about face and eyes and sort of really pulled that from there. So yes, and you can see the the little fragments around the edges of this one uh, a little bit better in this uh, image. Yeah, I think you can get a better sense, as you mentioned, of of the construction of this. It's it's similar in a way to kind of making a puzzle. I'm I'm you know attaching each piece individually, um, and it creates a sort of a one of a kind um, piece. Um, I, recently, I've done a series of portraits. Um, it's called Human Slash Nature. And the idea is that, you know, we've become so sort of divorced from our relationship with nature um, and, and really at a, at a detriment to the world. Um, the United Nations is projecting about one million species are on the, on the verge of extinction. And I think part of that is because we really, as human beings, we see ourselves as above and, and very separate from nature. So the idea is that I take photos of natural scenes and then I create human faces out of them. So it's this idea of if we see ourselves in nature, like actually made from it um, rather than apart from it, that maybe we'll establish a more sustainable connection to it. Uh, this piece right. we shot in uh, Kenilworth Aquatic Gardens uh, here in Washington, D.C., and it was during the time of the uh, lotus uh, blooming, uh, lotus blossoms. Um, in a lot of cultures, they're, they're symbols of, of purity. They grow in, you know, sort of dirty, swampy water, and yet they uh, bloom into these beautiful flowers. Um, so I thought it was a nice subject to uh, to make a portrait from. Yes, it is. And, and um, of course, I'm thinking of uh, Rosa um, Inez Vera, uh, Veronica, who was in the Arts Optimism show. And she had that piece that she was that of hers that was inspired by Kenneth Kenilworth Aquatic yeah. Gardens as well. Yeah, I'm just yeah. going to go back through some of these, Darren. Um, this one we already talked about. Um, th this one again about um, not so much faces and eyes, but definitely that feeling of symmetry and um, sort of from the inside out. <laughs> this piece, uh, yeah, oh, the, go back. the previous one was um, just trees, um, local local trees in, in autumn. And I think some some of my work, I'm really trying to just celebrate the beauty of the natural world and, and maybe something that you know, it, you, you see autumn trees every year and maybe take them for granted, but to just try to sort of present it in a, in a different way. Um, and to your comment on, on symmetry, I think that does recur a lot in my work. I think we are sort of, um, we've evolved to find symmetry very, very beautiful. Um, and 
it creates some interesting patterns as well. Um, so I often often use that technique, which, which you also see here. But with a non-organic subject, these are um, beautiful uh, antique cars in a museum exhibit in in Portland um, and turned into I, I, mandala. Yeah. Yeah, I really love that about this one, that uh, it was from an automobile. <laughs> uh, and uh, also, but the colors and just the overall composition is is very appealing. Um, I, I really, I really love this one. Um, in fact, I, I had put it behind um, one of the dancers is a little, if, see if I can find it for us right quick. Oh, yeah there <laughs> and that's that's mm -hmm. it behind carly's head there because i just i just thought it was very captivating it's in that back gallery of the athenaeum yeah i Sorry. sometimes I, I i lean into kind of organic shapes and, and i think this can maybe evoke a flower um and so even if the subject matter is you know a, something hard-edged and machined uh sometimes i like putting putting something you might not expect into a more organic context. Yeah, and, and this one, um, it's also in the back gallery, uh, but definitely can read that symmetry there. And it's almost this, like a reflection. Yeah, this piece is, um, it's, it's a spider um, and it's also a pair of eyes. So it's just sort of playing off of those two two visuals um and oh yeah i see the eyes now but I, I always thought of it as more like you know when you look down at your reflection in the water or something like that it's kind of what it reminded me of well one of the um people who attended the opening that i was talking to said that my work was kind of like a rorschach test where you know the viewer brings a lot to to the engagement with the work and and oftentimes they they see things in the pieces that that I hadn't intended, and and I love that. You know, I, I think that's my work is just a dialogue with with the viewer, and you know what what they bring to it is sort of just as valid as you know what my intentions were in in creating the piece. Um, these are just snowy branches and trees in in West Virginia, and um, I I often do natural scenes. I love just the, the branches in particular, they often create these really pleasing uh, fractal patterns and can give, give me a lot of potential to work with. This was actually the very first of the uh, portraits that I did. Um, and this is Petra, um, the famous site in Jordan. Um, these are all Anebatean graves, um, you know, that have been carved directly into into the rock, really incredible um, degree of, of craftsmanship. And so I was struggling to figure out what to, to do with these. And then I realized I could kind of subtly put a face into this. Um, if you see the piece in person, if you're up close to it, you don't really see the face. So you have to step back six or seven feet and then it resolves into, into the face. And I, that's another thing I sort of like about my work is that it works on different distances. Like from from far away, they can almost look like paintings, and when you get closer, you it looks more like a photo. And then when you get up really close, you see the the collage construction. And this is the last one I have with me here today. This is also from Petra, and I didn't like Photoshop these colors or patterns. Um, there's really mind blowing uh, patterns in the rocks um, in Petra. And so I just wanted to um, celebrate those. This isn't really intentionally a face, but I think, you know, again, people can can see uh, see all kinds of things in in these rich, uh, rich patterns. Cool. Um... Yeah, and it's uh, so great to take a little look at these pieces, and uh, uh, we're really excited. We're still in the process of putting this show together that um, will happen on February 20th, but Darren's uh, work is in place right now. And Veronica, do you want to uh, mention how long the exhibit will be in place? 
Sure. The um, our exhibit will be up until March 6th, 4 p.m. Sunday, uh, March 6th. And on that very day, uh, from 2 to 4 p.m., there's going to be an artist meet and greet. So Darren and uh, Noni will be at the Anthenaeum. They will be talking a little bit about their artwork, a little bit of an artist talk, as well as some time to just informally talk to each of the artists um, and our uh, viewers. Right. And next week, I hope to be able to do a little conversation like this with uh, Noni and about her um her artwork it's it's an interesting exhibit and you could see some of it in the video i showed because it, it's both artists are sharing the show but yet that work is intertwined and it's not like one room over here and one room over there i thought that was an interesting way to present both the artists and twig so, really had a um, twig had a um a major role in that that was her call and i think it works really well i think the works complement each other and um, we're really thrilled to have both artists at the Anthenaeum right now. Yeah, great. And it, we are thrilled to um, be able to work on this uh, this piece and get to know these artists a little bit. It's a real pleasure, always, to do that. And so um, what else can I tell you? Well, I'll just show this once more just because we want you to come to the show. <laughs> so please do that. Um, you can see the show either in person. I know sometimes it's hard to get out and about. If you cannot get out and about, it will also be available as a live stream. Uh, ever since we started going to the Athenaeum last, I think it was as long ago as October 2020, um, we have been streaming our shows from the Athenaeum in one format or another. Uh, fingers crossed that <laughs> it's gotten better as time has gone along, so you will actually be able to see something on your computer. So keep that in mind if you can't get there in person. We'll make that available to you. And I think, I think other than just take another last look at this video, maybe we'll just go out on that. What do you think? Anything else that I forgot to mention? Well, I'd just like to thank you both. Um, a, a big thanks to Veronica and Twig and the Athenaeum for the opportunity for the um, for the exhibit. And I'm very excited about the, the dance performance. This is the first time in my artistic career to have this kind of interdisciplinary collaboration. And I'm, I'm very excited to see what, what you and the dancers have come up with. Yeah, yeah, we're we're excited to continue working on these pieces this next few weeks. And we all will also be showing a couple of older works um, uh, from our repertory that are not related to the exhibit per se, but yet there's some tie-ins. So, like there just happens to be one piece that's a little bit about water. So um, that uh, sort of suits Noni's uh, theme pretty well. So anyway, I'm going to thank you all for tuning in and watching. And um, this will be available on YouTube and Facebook. So just tell your friends and Come see us on February 20th, and please go see the exhibit at the Athenaeum in person. It's really very, um, very worth worth the trip, and it's always fun to be down in Old Town, too. So We're thanks open. so much. We're open um, um, Thursdays through Sundays, new to four, so hopefully we'll see you at the Athenaeum. All right. We'll see you then.